It's Dr. Greg Mendel, your friendly anatomy professor. We're going to be looking at the spinal cord. Come on in, let's take a look. So when we look at this model, you can see that basically we have brain here, sacrum down here. And what we're going to be doing is looking at the cord itself on the way down. So we can see that this area about here is the cervical spine. Now you notice it gets kind of fat here. And then in the thoracics, it gets kind of skinny. And then here around the lumbar area, it gets fat again. This is called the cervical enlargement and the lumbar enlargement. Let's start up here and talk about the cervical first. First of all, there's a few things we want to talk about, and that is that we have these things called plexuses. So we have a cervical plexus with a combination of C1, 2, 3, and 4. Those four nerves come together and innervate the neck and the back of the head. And so that's its function of the brachial, sorry, cervical plexus. The brachial plexus, which is next, has a combination of C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. They come together to form the brachial plexus, and that's why the biggest reason for the cervical enlargement is we're innervating an arm here. In order from the way out, it's root, trunk, division, and cord. Coming down a little farther, we see this is the thoracic spine. It gets skinny again. There's some things coming out called the dorsal rami, sorry, the ventral rami, which are connecting to the white and gray rami communicantes and forming this thing that goes up and down, which is called the sympathetic trunk ganglia. Now this is for sympathetics. That's what's mostly coming out of the thoracic spine. If we work our way down a little bit lower here to the lumbar spine, there's a few things I want to point out. First of all, we see that the cord is basically ending here at approximately the level L2 or L3. When it ends at L2, L3, that does not mean that the rest of the nerves don't go down, they do. And we can see all these nerves going down. The name of the end of the cord at approximate level L2, L3 is called the conus medullaris. But as you can see, the nerves continue on. Now if you look at this, it kind of looks like a horse's tail. And because it looks like a horse's tail, they named it the cauda equina. Equine means horse, cauda means tail. So this is the cauda equina. If you remember the layers of meninges from the outside in, we start with the dura mater and then go to the arachnoid mater and then the pia mater. The pia mater is intimately touching the cord. But at the bottom of the cord, the pia mater does continue as this thing called the filum terminale. It's not a nerve, but it's actually a filament of dense regular connective tissue that is attaching to the coccyx to help anchor the spinal cord down. When we look <coughs> at the lower parts, we have two more plexuses to talk about. The lumbar plexus is L1, 2, 3, and 4, and they come together to form the longest and largest nerve in the front of the leg, which is this one here, called the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve is the largest nerve coming out of the lumbar plexus, L1, 2, 3, and 4. The sacral plexus is a little bit farther down. It shares L4 and goes down to S4. So L4, L5, S1, 2, 3, and 4 form the sacral plexus as we see coming out down here. And we have a combination of two nerves joining to form one. We have the common fibular and the tibial nerve joining to form the longest and fattest nerve in the body, which is the sciatic nerve. It travels down the back of the leg all the way to the foot. That is all in this video. How do you feel about that one?